I'm gonna teach you how to implement uh, multiple language support for uh, both Android and iOS, so that uh, your users can decide uh, what language they wanna see in your app. This example right here will uh, update the app's locale by uh, triggering a uh, platform-specific logic. We will use a common resource, string files, with uh, already declared uh, qualifiers for uh, various languages. In this case, only two of them. Being able to provide uh, multiple language support brings a couple of benefits, like a user retention, better app store visibility, and even improved conversion rates. Here is a little definition for those who don't know what a localization actually is. So it's basically the process of uh, adapting your application to support uh, multiple languages and uh, regional preferences. This includes uh, translating the text, formatting uh, dates, numbers, currencies, and even adjusting uh, layouts for uh, right-to-left languages like uh, Arabic or uh, Hebrew. In this video specifically, we're gonna focus only on the translation part of the localization. I have already generated a simple KMP project that targets both Android and iOS. First, let's take a look at the version catalog file. We're gonna include the two libraries only. Coin, dependency injection, since we're gonna need to inject the Android context later, and the second one, remember settings library, which is something similar to a data store preferences. I've recently found this library, and I think that uh, it offers a quite nice and composer-friendly API. It's uh, built on top of the multi-platform settings library, by the way. Then, inside the Gradle build file, we need to add the coin Android artifact inside the Android domain source set, while uh, all other ones should be located inside the common main. Great! Let's uh, quickly create uh, two new directories inside the Composer resources. Values directories with uh, two language uh, qualifiers that uh, we are going to support for this uh, demo project. English should be a default one and a Serbian that we can switch to. In those uh, new directories, create a strings XML file. This is the place where we need to specify the text that we want to translate later. So for the strings XML English qualifier, I will add the text on the English of course. And then in that other strings XML file, we will use the same string name with a different uh, translated text. Then we need to create the logic to update this uh, locale on uh, each platform separately. This should immediately make our application take the resources that uh, are declared with a corresponding language qualifier. So we need the one expect class that we can define uh, separately on Android and iOS. This uh, single function will take the language ISO string value and uh, update the local on uh, each platform. Now goes the actual implementation. So just press Alt or Command plus Enter to create or uh, generate the actual declarations for uh, both source sets. For the Android part, we need the context object in this case which is why we can pass it as a constructor so that uh, we can inject it later. And then this is the logic for uh, updating the local itself. It's pretty simple. After that, let's open up the actual declaration for the iOS platform and uh, add the similar logic. As you can see, the code is uh, quite short here as well. Perfect. After that, we need to describe how to provide an instance of this class, separately for Android and iOS. Because, if you recall, the Android declaration requires the Android context. So, go ahead and create a package with a new file, in which we need to add the function to initialize the coin library. We're adding an optional parameter that will be used on an Android target only to pass the context while on the iOS, we don't need it. After that, create an expect declaration for the coin module so that we can provide the class instance separately. As before, press that shortcut to generate the actual declarations for the target module, and the first goes the iOS source set. So here we are simply gonna create the singleton instance for this class. For the Android source set on the other hand, we can also use the single function, only in this case we need to provide the Android context. To achieve that, we can call Android context function from the coin.android artifact. The only thing that is left here to do is to call the initialize coin function on each target platform. 
that the initialize function can be called inside the onCreate function of the application class that we're gonna create. When uh, calling the initialize coin function in Android the target, as a config parameter, be sure to pass the Android context. Because that's how we are gonna tell coin library uh, which context to inject in our localization class in Android. After that, don't forget to add this application class to your Android manifest file, and we have successfully handled the Android platform. Now open up the main view controller so that uh, we don't forget to call this uh, same initialize function on an iOS platform. Or otherwise, our application will crash. Lastly, we can focus on the actual uh, localization implementation. So uh, first, we want to create the new enum class to represent a different language that we want to support in this app. For now, I will add uh, only two of them. For uh, each language, we also need to add an appropriate uh, ISO string value, which is important because uh, those exact values uh, should later be applied on a localization for uh, each platform. Next, in the app Kotlin file, we're gonna declare uh, three variables. The first one is a localization singleton that we're gonna inject using a coin inject function. Then below that, we also want to create a variable that should represent the locale or a language ISO string value. Here, you can see that we are using that remember string settings uh, function, which is an API or a composable from that remember settings library that I have told you about from the beginning. As a first parameter, we are adding the key value under which this uh, string ISO value should be persisted in a preference storage. And also a default value that uh, should be used if a non value was saved. Whenever you update this uh, variable from your code, this uh, value will not just update the variable itself, but also a value in a preferences storage as well. Which means this value is uh, persisted by default. Pretty neat. Finally, below we can also construct the language constant by using the saved ISO value. To do that, we can iterate through all language entries and get the one that has the same ISO value that we have persisted. Now we need to create the simple screen that will be used to display a selected language, then a string value that should be translated properly based on the saved ISO local value, and a switch component that we can use to toggle between the two languages. When that happens, we want to update the app's locale as well as persist the new ISO language string value. Here, you can see that we are referencing that string value from the common resource, and for now it's not available because we haven't rebuilt this project. So be sure to do that, and after that this string should become available in your project. Now we can call this a screen, pass the language parameter, and implement the logic in this uh, on language change lambda. So when we toggle the switch component, we want to update the language uh, ISO variable that uh, will immediately persist that value in our app, but also trigger that uh, apply language function from the localization class, which will immediately reflect on our application local state and update the string value to translate the text. Let's launch this application on Android first, to see if uh, everything works uh, as expected. So by default, we can see that the string text in English. Because a default language is uh, set to be English. If we click that uh, switch button, then the string text uh, should update to a Serbian translation, because we have persisted a new local ISO string and applied the new local to our application. Which means it works. So even we restart this application, we should be able to see that the same language that we have previously persisted. Everything works great. Also, we can test this on iOS. When we toggle this button, a language translation will change and the new locale is gonna be applied. Plus, if we restart this application, a language selection is going to be preserved. Perfect. So that's how you can implement the feature to allow your users to select the various languages in your application. By the way, don't forget to like this video if you find it helpful, and thank you for watching.
if I die, I'm a legend. When they lay me down to rest, 